This is going to be Psalms chapter number 13. And we're going to talk about the subject, what if hell was your eternal home? So in Psalms 13 and verse 1, it says to the chief musician, a psalm of David, How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? So imagine if you were in hell and you asked this question, How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? The answer would be, yes, forever, if hell was your eternal home. So number one, if hell was your eternal home, you would be denied. Psalms 917 says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Men forget God. They forget about eternity. So when eternity comes, the Lord forgets about them. If you forget the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, if you never come to Him for salvation, then you'll be denied access to heaven. You'll be denied fellowship with God. Hell will be your eternal home. And since you're denied, you'll be forgotten. Psalms 10, 2, uh, 10 12 says, Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. Now the Lord doesn't forget the saints. He hears the cry of the humble, but the prideful in hell, he won't listen to them. They rejected his son. Isaiah 49, 14 through 15 says, But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, Yet will I not forget thee. So the Lord has put Israel to the side for now. They are blind in part, but he hasn't forgotten his covenant with Abraham. And if you're born again, then the Lord won't forget you or deny you access into heaven. If you're saved, he's not going to forget you. He's not going to deny you. And when he comes to get you at the rapture, you're not going to be forgotten. Have you ever been left by a school bus or a ride to work or missed a plane? Has someone ever forgot about you? Maybe they forgot about eating dinner with you and stood you up. But if you're a born-again believer, then the Lord won't forget you. Hebrews 13, 5 said, For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Luke 16, 24 through 25 says this about the rich man. It says, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. So the rich man is forgotten. But if you're born again, you'll live in eternity with Abraham and Lazarus. But what if hell was your eternal home? You would be denied. And you would also be defeated. In Psalms 13, 2, it says, How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? If you're in hell, you're defeated. In this life before death, you have hope in Jesus Christ if you're saved. And a lost man has hope that medicine or a doctor can help him. He has hope that someone will relieve him of his sorrow and pain. But there is no hope in hell. You will sorrow daily. Psalms 13, 2, How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Uh, David knows that the sorrow is temporary. But in hell, it's not temporary. In Revelation fourteen eleven, it says, The smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So if you're a Christian, you may be in sorrow daily. And this can be a good thing, to be in sorrow daily. Ecclesiastes 3, 4 says, there's a, talks about a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. So if you're in sorrow because you have a burden for a lost soul, this is a good thing. If you're in sorrow as a Christian, 
because you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, then this isn't a good thing. A Christian's life is to be joyful with peace, but at the same time he should have sorrow. The more you weep for people now, the more you're going to shout in heaven. Philippians 1.23 says, For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. That's what Paul said. So even though a Christian should have sorrow, he should never be defeated. Though a Christian knows he's got a lot of responsibility to do in this life, he should still want to go to heaven. He should still know that heaven is waiting for him. And this can keep him from having to be overcome with so much sorrow that he doesn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Psalms 13, 2, How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? If you're saved, then you have the victory. 2 Corinthians 2, 14 says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ. Notice that word, triumph. 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. The enemy will not be exalted above you if you are saved. Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. He is the prevailing king. He lives in you and you in him. Psalms 13, 3 says, Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against him. And those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. So not only do you have the prevailing king in you, but if you hide the word in your heart, you have something else in you that prevails. Acts 19.20, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. The word prevails. It's always going to be here. It's uh, uh, God pre is going to preserve his word from this generation to forever. And your enemies may defeat you and small battles, but the big war is already written in stone, and you are victorious in the book, in the Word of God. You've already prevailed. Imagine being able to choose between two teams, and you knew who would win before you chose. That's what's happening. You either choose Jesus and win, or choose the devil and lose. Uh, the man in hell chose the devil by rejecting the Savior. He's defeated and will live in eternity with a defeated foe. His enemy will be exalted over him. And the devil is the only one who will have any kind of pleasure in hell. And his pleasure will come from knowing he led all of these people away from God to spend an eternity in hell with him. So don't let the devil say he has prevailed against you psalms 13 3 consider and hear me o lord my god lighten mine eyes lest i sleep the sleep of death so the lord would hear you now but he won't listen when you're in hell when you finally sleep the sleep of death and, and go off into eternity are you going to go to hell or are you going to go to heaven psalms 13 4 says lest mine enemy say i have prevailed against him and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. So if you wake up in hell and you see that hell is your eternal home, you're going to find out quickly that you're denied. God's not going to save you no matter what you say. And you're going to find out you're defeated. You're going to realize the devil and the unclean spirits defeated you. And now there's no opportunity to come back and win. You chose the losing team. You chose the defeated foe, whether you know it or not. Because if you refuse to choose, you automatically choose the devil. God chose you, and the devil chooses you. Now you have to break the tie. You have to come to Jesus and break the tie. If you don't come to either one, you automatically take the devil. You automatically go to hell. So next you need to decide. In Psalms 13, 5 and 6 it says, But I have trusted in thy mercy. 
My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. So David says, I have trusted in thy mercy. Mercy is God keeping you from something you deserve. You deserve hell. You deserve for that to be your eternal home. You deserve to be denied. You deserve to live eternity as a defeated sinner. You deserve hell. But if you decide to believe the gospel, then you have salvation. And your eternal home will be heaven and not hell. And this is the greatest decision you will ever make. David said, The Lord hath dealt bountifully with me. God not only gives you mercy, but also gives you grace. Grace is God giving you something you don't deserve. The free gift of salvation. If that is all the Lord has given you, then he hath dealt bountifully with you. So don't, if you don't want to be denied a home in heaven, and spend eternity defeated with a defeated foe, then you need to decide to believe on Jesus Christ. Put your trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and resurrected. 1 Corinthians 15. Paul said, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So he died. You say, well, how did he die? He died by shedding his blood. And Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So you know that he died. You know he died on the cross, shed his blood for your sins because you know you're a sinner. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So you know he died. You know he died by shedding his blood. And you know that you're a sinner. And you know that you're going to go to hell as a defeated, wicked sinner if you don't believe the gospel. So all you have to do to be saved is come to Jesus Christ. And rely on him and what he did for you on the cross to be your payment for sin. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I hope you'll get saved before it's too late.